Hey, what is up guys? Degrees here. Thought I'd make a requested tutorial for you guys on how to do 3D motion tracking. Um, first thing that I want to say in this is that there is a huge misconception that you can do this in Final Cut. And I just want to get this out of the way that that is false. You cannot do 3D motion tracking in Final Cut. I'm A lot of people say like, oh, well, you can get the 3D perspective plugin, but then you still have to keyframe it and it and it'll never really look perfect it'll be really tedious and honestly it's just way easier to get uh... Buju, that's what i use and cinema 4d it's way easier than trying to sit there and keyframe everything so uh... yeah two programs that you're gonna need to do this in is Buju, b-o-u-j-o-u -O -U, right there and cinema 4d which i'll get to in a bit and the other thing you're going to need to have is you're going to need to use an image sequence, which if you don't have a way of making an image sequence, then I guess you might have to try and find a uh, converter, like I use iSkySoft, but I'm not sure if that will let you export as an image sequence. One thing I know that'll, that will is uh, After Effects, and that's what I always use. Um, I'm thinking Premiere does it too. But Final Cut itself will not let you export as an image sequence, which kind of stinks. But uh, maybe they'll do that in a later update. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so once you have an image sequence... Oh, and one other way you can try to get it if you don't have either of those two ways is download a motion track template off of YouTube. People make them all the time. And, a lot of, and then just motion track it yourself by using their image sequence. And... Being Mac, it is a lot harder to do motion tracking templates because uh, the PC version of Cinema 4D and the Mac version of Cinema 4D are not compatible. So if they make a motion track template, you will not be able to use it unless the person who made it is also Mac. So anyway, so that might be one way you can get an image sequence if you don't have it, if you don't have any way of making it. But once you do, go into Buju and hit click import sequence right there. And then... Then you're going to want to find where your video or your image sequence is. Mine is on the desktop there and then I named the folder JPEG. And then here, once you get into this, just click your very first image, hit open. And there you go. Change your frame rate to whatever this, whatever your frame rate of the video is. Mine is 60, or no wait, never mind, it's 59.94. Hit apply. And for some reason, it'll always switch it back to 25. I'm not sure why it does that. I'll just go and click it again, and it'll work the next time. And make sure this is at free move. And yeah, not interlaced. And that should be it. All right, next thing you're going to want to do is this is where it starts taking a little bit of time. Um, just hit track features, which is right here. And all frames, make sure it's sequence one, yours. You shouldn't have any more sequences. And hit start. I purposely made mine short so the uh, track wouldn't take too long. As you can see, what it is doing is it is picking all of the different areas of high contrast and around them, like where the contrast like somewhat changes, kind of, and it is basically going to track the entire video and where all those spots move. Um, I'll go and fast forward through this part so you don't have to sit here and wait, so I'll be right back. All right, there we go. And as you can see, now you have all these little red crosses motion tracked to your video. And it has all these little yellow lines showing where they have moved to. Um, next thing that you're going to want to do, which is also going to take some time, is click this camera solve, which is now you're able to highlight. Go on and click that. Make sure you have sequence one again, all frames. And I like to click optimize camera path smooth smoothness. And, oh, that one didn't take quite as long. All right, go and wait for that. And what you'll see this kind of does is it turns all of the, I guess you could say usable red crosses into small little dots that'll, that'll be perfectly motion tracked into yours. And what it's actually doing is it's making a uh, 3D field of, it's gonna try to kind of map out the entire place. I'll go and show you what I mean here in just a second. See, there's all your, little dots motion tracked perfectly to your video uh, keep in mind what this is gonna be this kinda stinks is it's not gonna be able to pick up that like if you put a piece of text back here 
then and you keep going through the video, it's still going to show through like the car. Like it's still going to say motion tracker at spa, but you'll still see the text. So uh, one way you can use to reverse that is by using Mocha. Um, if you guys would like, I can make a tutorial on that too, but I don't think I'm going to have time to fit that into this one. Um, talking about the 3D field, one thing you can do is uh, click that button right there. And this is going to show you kind of the 3D field of your entire video. Um, that can come in handy when on this next spot when what you're going to be doing is changing the scene geometry. So go and click that button. And we're basically right now is we're going to get rid of the bad dots. Um, hit add coordinate from hint. This is the origin. This is where you're going to want your text to be. It doesn't have to be exact. Just choose the approximate spot, preferably like in the middle of the screen. Like, uh, I think that one right there is going to be good. Or actually, let's choose this one down here. Yeah. Yeah, the one right there. And then what you're going to do is hit update coordinate frame so that it actually does something. And now we're going to hit another add coordinate. Change the type to x-axis. And now you're going to choose all of the dots on the x-axis of that. Making sure that it is on the same plane as the other one. So like, see this dot is right here so it's kind of on that crate. So things that are on the same plane as that would be these three dots right here. Because they are all on the same sort of field as that one. So connect it to selected and update the coordinate frame again. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the y-axis. Again, make sure that it's on the same plane. There we go. Connect to selected and update coordinate frame again. And that should be it. It can get a little tricky sometimes. And it you can test it right now, like hit add test object. And yeah, that looks like it motion tracked pretty well. Um, it's never really usually that easy. You normally have to try it a couple times. Uh, make sure you watch it really closely when you do because sometimes you'll see it move just a little bit. And then once you go into Cinema 4D and add the text and like add, yeah, the text that you want, then that's when you'll really see it kind of moving around and it'll look pretty crappy. But uh, anyways, that is it for Buju. Now you're just going to hit Export Camera right here. Uh, browse, make sure you select where you want it, and make sure you name it. This default spot that it gives you, um, I don't think it actually exists because I have tried, I've saved things to it, and I end up having to redo everything again because I can't find it. Um, I'll do it to there, change the project to tutorial, and make sure you change this to Cinema 4D. Hit save. Now once you're in here, just change your scale scene by right there to 100. And, yep, then you're good. Just hit save, and it'll export it. Okay, next, uh, lose. Now let's go and find it it's in this folder right there. Go and click the Cinema 4D file. Oh yeah, and, uh, I forgot, Mocha does actually work with Cinema 4D, so you can do it all. You can make make sure you always put Cinema 4D at the very end of your product, if you are doing Mocha, if you already know how to do that. Um, all right, so now once we are in Cinema 4D, we're going to make a new t a material. Just double click down there. Go to Texture right here. Click on that. And we're going to choose our PNG sequence. So open, no. Oh shoot, I think I chose the wrong, yeah, I chose the wrong one, whoops. Here it is. All right, and now once you're in here, go and click on that again, and then go to animation right here. Scroll down and hit calculate right here, and that'll turn it into the video. Now what you're gonna do is click on this button right here, click and hold it, and drag down to background. Now drag your material onto the background, and there we go, now we have our video in the background, and as you can see right here, 
we have our motion tracks thing. So now to add your text, go into MoGraph right here and hit text object. As you can see there, now we have some motion track text. So make it say whatever you want. I'll say it say tut. And yep, that is about it. I'm gonna go and show you a few things. Uh, there's already a lot of tutorials on motion on 3D motion tracking. So I'm gonna try to make mine a little different. I'm gonna show you a lot of the effects that you see popular edits use, like uh, just like the random effectors that they use, or just like the fonts and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to change my fonts to my favorite, which is Batman Forever Alternate. I think it looks pretty neat. Now once you have that, go to caps. And this is something you're always going to want to do. Uh, do flay cap. And then I, I like to do three. What you're going to see that does is it's going to kind of add, make your text look. Here, I'll zoom in on the text. There we go. As you can see, it kind of adds like this rounded edges sort of a thing, which makes it really useful when you are doing like a multicolor text, I guess you could say. Um, I want to show you what I mean here. Uh, go and make it to do like multicolor text where like the entire thing's black except for like white edges or something like that, which you see a lot of people do. Make two materials, drag them on there, change this one. Oops, sorry, my clock's going. So click that, and we're gonna make this one white, and we're gonna make the other one black. Okay, and on your white one, if you want the white to be the edges, if you don't want the white to be the edges, then do exactly what I'm doing, except for on the black text. Um, click C1, I believe it's C1. Maybe it's R1. And then change your other one to C1. There we go. Uh, kind of makes that black and the background white, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, that's almost everyone does something like that. Uh, makes it look really professional. Um, you can reverse those again however you want. You can even do three. Um, I can't, sorry, I can't remember the third, the tag for the third color. Uh, I'm sure there's other more advanced tutorials on that, but two should make you, should get you by. Um, let's see, what are some other ones? Uh, random effectors. You can go into MoGraph again right here and hit random effector. Oh, whoops. Make sure you have text object selected before you do this. MoGraph, random effector. Okay, and then scroll down into here. This is going to make all of the text kind of, it's going to animate it. It's going to like twist and stuff. All the different letters are going to twist. Um, unselect position, and you can do scale. I don't usually. I just do rotation. And go to the beginning of your video. Now you're going to keyframe this, keyframe the rotation by clicking control, is it? Yep, clicking control, and then clicking these little circles. Okay, and see, we're going to, let's have it start out rotated. So go and drag these up so they do whatever you want. As you can see, they're twisting. There we go. And then go to the end of your video, and we're going to keyframe this all again. Here you can see what I meant, where it's not going to recognize that like there was an incoming wall or something like that. So keyframe those all again, and make sure it's zero now. Looks up oh, the keyframe. I, just, I forgot you had to keyframe it first. There we go. There we go. Now you can see it is animated and it's slowly kind of twisting and turning around, which that looks pretty cool. You see a ton of people do that one. Um, and it's, I really like it because you can make it unique on how you want to do it. Um, I do that one a lot. And another thing you can do is you can add like different shapes and stuff. Uh, just go right here into this like box right here. So you want a cube or something like that. And then you can move that around scale and stuff. It looks kind of bad right now, but if you had a bunch of them, 
it can look pretty cool. You can do some cool stuff with that, add like a small scenery. Um, if you want to move that around and stuff, just right click, right click it, um, or hit E, T, or R. That'll E is to move it, T is to scale, and R is rotating it. Um, yeah, uh, I think that is about it. That's all ever I really do in Cinema 4D. There isn't a whole lot more you can do. You can play around with a lot of these different effectors and stuff. Um, I know there's some like explosion. If you go into, where was it? Yeah, right here. You can make some explosion where like the text looks like it explodes. Um, wrap, twist, all that kind of stuff. You can play with the keyframes and do that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, that is about it. I hope this tutorial kind of gave you an idea of everything you can do in Cinema 4D. Um, it's a really cool. I hope that this tutorial is what you guys were looking for. I've, I'm assuming a lot of you guys really wanted to learn how to do it in Final Cut, which I do apologize that is not possible. Um, I did make that one on how you can do 2D motion tracking if you're interested in that. I'll go and add a link to the description. Um, yeah, that is about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If it was, please leave a like and subscribe for more.